Hello everybody, welcome to the official replay cast of the round of 32 clash, game number two between Gogo Bay and Jimmy Fantastic. Gogo Bay won his group and obviously they're both Dark Elf coaches. Gogo Bay is from Canada, qualified through G-O-B-B-L-N. Jimmy Fantastic is British and I, qual I that's me, I qualified through Super League, uh, you know, the premier competition. Um, that isn't the World Cup, I guess, <laughs> on Blood Bowl 3. So there you go, and um, this time he won the toss to receive. I went with Chevrons because I thought, number one, he's only got one Witch Elf, so heavy commitment to a Surf doesn't look so good for him. And also, after I pushed early down the side a little bit, I thought he might try and do the same, so I thought I'll... I'll I'll stop that. Let's nip that in the bud, and I'll uh, I'll do chevrons like this, which I thought was okay. And we got the traps. Yeah. Not a big deal, is it? I quite like his build with the assassin, honestly, and I love three rerolls. I was very close to taking this build myself. Very close. Um, I went with the reserve for. More safety, you're right, you know, you can't fail the reserve. Um, a little bit better with overtime. And I went with maximum safe positionals. He is he is missing a witch, which which does suck, honestly, missing a witch. Yeah, thanks, Toro. So there we go. So, he, you know, he just does a standard first turn there. He's actually didn't knock me down here, so I get a free block, which is quite nice, isn't it? So I'm doing the same as last game. I'm just going to screen, 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 screen some more, and keep screening. <laughs> get a random power there. It's funny this, if you watch this one live, I actually thought about this last move for like a minute. Because, first of all, I could roll a 1 and fail and die, right? That's always a possibility. Second of all, he could have shadowed me, right? And I think if I dodge and he shadows me, like I know it's kind of stupid. But like then he could stab and, you know, I could dodge, I could roll a double, I could roll a, not a double one, I wouldn't re-roll it. So I could roll a one, die, then he could shadow me, stab this guy, kill him. And then he could blitz this guy and then have a hole through. So I, <laughs> as, as ludicrous as that was, I thought, let's stop that one in whatever chance. So, yeah, happy with this. Again, he's blitzing a blodger like I'm presenting him with blodgers, right? Because he can't hit these because they're in the interior and he's got no guard. So I'm, I'm presenting him blodgers so it's hard for him to get knockdowns. And obviously it makes the knockdown worse if he gets one, but... And then the same kind of thing, right? Just like a big long line here. Should be pretty difficult for him to do anything about. Huge line. And in fact, he doesn't. Just gets a push. Would have knocked over a lineman, just quietly. So we're just going to blitz this guy, right? Pretty obviously. And uh, keep a big line. Oh. I just, so, this was maybe excessive, right? Because he had the blitzer, before his fast players were in the middle, and then he had this blitzer over here. And I thought, do you know what? He could try and slip a blitzer through here. So rather than keeping the big line, I thought I'd go for, like, you know, more standard chevron -y thing, but cover the sideline, this sideline a bit more. Which I quite liked. 
think he's got he's got three fast players on this side and only one fast player on the other side, and he's the furthest over. So. Just a bit of shuffling. He's got his Venger bus there. I mean, I've got no intentions of going, you know, dodging into any cage here whatsoever. Safe moves first. Get the assists in. Two into two there. Lovely. down there this is like maybe a tiny bit weak on the side now right only a tiny but because I'm further forward it's a bit less weak I didn't hate that it's turn five it's getting late for him turn five he's got to start trying to do something sometime top skull love to see a fail roll every now and then he dub scold earlier, I didn't notice that on this replay. Um, so he's down to one reroll now. He's, he has rolled two dub skulls actually. And he double dodges to get something behind the line. So. You know, he, he didn't get a lot. He didn't get a lot through after that, but he's got something, hasn't he? I do commit the Wrestle Witch to this hit, which. Not 100% on being a good idea. Never mind. And like, I've just got to commit a bit, I think. You know, I've got to make some punches. Can't keep screening, can I? Because he, he put he put somebody behind the line. He put a few people in contact, and oh my god. In game five, we've made a casualty. Incredible. Serious injury, and it's it doesn't happen. It, it's thirty-seven and a half percent to work. So a reserve would have been better than better for him than an apple there, wouldn't it? I wasn't sure about this man. Maybe this man should have been here or something, right? Or out here. Here, like this, this was this this lino was like such a tough one. I thought at least if I put him here, it's taken him two players to deal with it, right? But I really don't know where he should have been. He could have been here, could have been here, could have been right out wide. There were so many places where I could have put him. I've got no idea what the right square was, but I mean he's got an obvious punch through, either either blocking both of these and then blitzing this guy. Or blocking this one and blitzing this one. He's got an obvious way th diagonal through, hasn't he? But I wasn't. I don't know, it was tough. And he didn't even knock me over, which was nice. And he goes there for that push. And with only one reroll, doesn't want to try and dodge him out. So, you know, he hasn't got much here, has he? He could have. Uh, he could have been a bit luckier and had a lot more through. But instead he just gets very limited penetration. But he I mean he is through, which is good, isn't it? And I've got to real really scramble next turn to close this yeah. down. And like I'm really committed here, actually, right? Four players up there, that's a big commitment. And I thought to myself, I mean, I thought long and hard about this turn. There's a lot that can happen, right? At best, if I screen, I just don't know how good the screen is, honestly. Like, I could blitz this guy and I could try and, like, you know, do some kind of screen here. But then he can switch back. And he's got this guy deep. So, it's not too many dice to hit the ball. So, I decided to kind of go for a kind of halfway house of um, mostly... You know, screening a bit. <laughs> screening a little bit. I mean, the blockless block there was a bit risky, wasn't it, before moving anybody else? I just wanted to see if it was a way, you know, use my reroll if it was necessary, but you can definitely argue that I should have not done that block till later in the turn, if at all. Yeah. Knocked 
um, yeah, that, that was maybe bad that block, but here we go, this is dodge. I'm not I'm not using rerolls. No, I should have moved that one first, so a bit bit ordering here, it was a stressful, stressful game. Bad ordering. Double dodge, didn't re-roll that, right? I've only got two re-rolls. This was just a shot at powering in. Because I thought if I pow in, this is pretty good. Um, I did first action move this witch here, which, you know, could have been up here or whatever, would have been better, honestly. And, I mean, there's an obvious gaping hole here. Rerolls that, just to save him dodges. That's... It's got to be wrong, hasn't it? That's got to be wrong, that re-roll. But I guess he's got a lots of block the dodgeless players, but then you've already used the re-roll, right? So, I mean, it, it stops the chance of them rolling a 1 in 36. But I think he uh, probably should have not re-rolled that and just taken them both down. But yeah, look how much better this Witch Elf could have been if she was like there or something. I don't know. I just put her there in a nothing place to be a to be a um, safety. And then he tried the uh, tag at the end and failed, so this is a non-cage. Instant one dice. Though it is with a block witch and not a wrestle witch. Disaster. But, uh... Yeah, so this is nice, isn't it? So now, I, all safe glorious. moves. No, I won't give in. Oh, thank you very much. Until I'm victorious. And I will defend. I will defend. I'm watching enough to throw this your way, smiley face. Thank you very much, Santa from Exeter. Staying fantastic for two glorious months. Thank you very much. The 2D chain into WrestleWitch instead of 2-1D for pushers. Oh, chain. No, because I'd have to chain twice, wouldn't I? Oh, okay. Uh, do you know what? I didn't think of that. Wow. Clever Odont. All right. So I could have blitzed this one, and then I would what needed a player in there, a player in here, and then I could have blitzed and then pushed him to there and then pushed him to there. Yeah, that's pretty good, isn't it? And then I just need a 2D. Yeah, that's, that's better. I'd say that's better, hold on. I didn't consider it. I did not consider it. I just thought, push him twice into the witch. Um, didn't consider it at all. The, the, I mean, so the, the payoff that I've got here is my players are in good spots, right? For like, they're standing in good squares. Now, they are, they are, he still has elves, but my players are in good squares, um, if things fail. And the first block is a push, which is fine, but I had a 1 in 6 chance of getting the ball. And I had another 1 in 6 chance of getting the ball, roll the water ball down, have to re-roll it, get the push. And then now this guy comes in. I mean, he could have moved in first, I guess. Get the power. But yeah, I could have powered him, right? I could have powered him in on the initial hit. Get the power there. Fail the catch. And what a scatter. And I had this guy waiting. After all the pick up, have to hand off still. And he is away. Glorious. Glorious. And then, I'll be honest, I didn't really think about him chaining his Wrestle Witch. Um, yeah. I mean, as it happened, me getting the second push led to a much better bounce out. So, he could have rolled some dice to chain his Witch Elf forward, right? Into range. And then the Witch Elf could... If he chained the Witch Elf one square, the Witch Elf could have hit me. So probably I should have had this this blitzer um, should have been like further forward, so I had a secondary scoring threat. But I didn't really think about that. The assassin couldn't reach. The stab couldn't reach. He could have in Blood Bowl two. He could have stabbed without a square of movement in Blood Bowl two. Um, 
but never in Blood Bowl 3 could he have reached. So I knew I was safe from that. But I, I didn't think of the uh, Assassin Witch, the Assassin Witch, the Witch Chain. Which then I thought later I did. I looked down, if you're watching live like that, I looked down like this and think, whoops. And then Zeus got there in case he was watching, he wouldn't have seen it. <laughs> ah, to be honest. Yeah, the handoff, I had to do it. I was, it was horrible. Like, I, I waited a little bit of time, you know, but I had to do it. And there we go. Get the touchdown. So 1 0 up is obviously fantastic. Way better than just topping the score, getting the, getting the turnover score. So very happy about that. Um, and now it's my drive. All I've got to do is not lose. He's only got 10 players. So, you know, I'm going to turtle. Turtle, 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 turtle. And then, oh my god, look how good this is. Let's start off, right? I set up, this is my saved setup, right? This is my saved setup. Very similar to what, I mean, this is what I used in the first game. This is what he used pretty much exactly the same on his setup. And then I thought, wait a minute. I thought, wait a minute. The only chance he's got, he's got 10 players. I'm Jimmy Fantastic. <laughs> the only chance he's got is if he gets a blitz on me. So, perfection. We go full anti-blitz setup. And he rolls a blitz. <laughs> so I was like, good. Good. Bizarrely though, I didn't have my witches on each, either side. I don't know why I didn't have my witch elves on either side. That was really weird. I don't know why that didn't happen. So I feel, unfortunately I don't have a close witch elf for this. Get the screen in first, which was and part of the screen is the assisting this guy, which was nice, and I thought. And then do the blocks to free the other guy, so I don't have to risk a 1 in 36 chance. Some people would just dodge away, wouldn't they, with that guy? But I thought, let's let's make the blocks. So I can't roll a 1 in 36. Get the knockdown there, glorious. And I have to follow. Unfortunately, I have to follow, don't I? And then uh, he fails the shadowing, thank God. And then do the pickup, and then we get the surf. Thanks, old Dom. Loving surfing the assassin, right? Because I'm terrified of the assassin. The assassin is like, I feel the assassin is how I can lose at this point. Now that he hasn't got the dodge in for a stab. I feel a lot more secure. Cool, calm, collected. Yeah, I, I quite, I quite liked it as well. I, I, I've honestly quite liked most of my games. I think I've played pretty safe. I think my turn ordering's been pretty good. It did go to hell a little bit in game one of this. Actually, you know, watching the replay. Wasn't quite as good as I'd have liked it to have been. Um, but you know, it's never going to be perfect, right? I tried the jump there, which was pretty funny, wasn't it? He was going for the ball hit, right? I, I didn't think about this. I didn't think about this, but he was going for the ball hit. Um, three, four, five, six, seven, rush, I guess. And it was a four plus jump, three plus three plus dodges with dodge. Not crazy, and if he'd powered, he could have powered it there and maybe he could have got something on it, but I mean, I still have players in front, so I wasn't too concerned. I really wanted to surf these guys later at some point, but I thought, let's just, you know, finger bus it continuously. Just don't let him. Like, he's, eventually he's going to base up, right? He's eventually just going to come and base up my cage. Um, so as long as I've got things that can hit him, so... I'm still protecting the Witch Elves here, which don't, they don't really need it anymore because he doesn't have an Assassin. And then I can do this Blitz, and if I fail the dodge, it doesn't matter, right? Because I've got the ball in a mega secure cage. And the same with these dodges, they don't really matter if they fail. Yeah, I think he did as well. The problem, the problem is, with him playing the defense, it's hard for him, right? He's 1-0 down. Not only 
like does he not ha not only does he have to stop me from scoring he actually has to turn me over like it's so hard like it's so hard to defend against this because if he throws things at me I'll go I'll blitz right past him right so it's hard but he did seem to be play a little bit too passively for too long yeah he's players down well yeah he's, yeah, he's got nine players versus 11 it's so hard at some point he's got to do lack it right so if he does it too soon he's got nine players getting beaten up by 11 as well so he's, he's got to hold off a little bit it was a real tough ask I'm keeping the wrestle in the cage so that I can always like you know if he bases me with a blodger I can hit him with a wrestle and then again do all of that then do the dodge out so it's a matter of one in 36 I'm hoping it will be my go-to race and he's I've not played much dark elves at all <laughs> it was a bit of a medical yeah. I could have not dodged this guy out right because I'm players or I could have just let him down, but I did want the scoring threat, right? I want a scoring threat so that he's got to worry about it. Divert resources, maybe blitz it, and then I get cast. So that was a bit unlucky, but I could have just left him lying, like, without, without dodge or anything. So now, he, now he's now he's assaulting the cage, right? But I like that I've got this as a... I've got like a cluster there and a cluster there and I just thought I like that having this guy out there but maybe I shouldn't have done. So again, first thing I do is make the ball safe, is it? No. Ah, probably make it more... more I make it more in danger if anything, don't I? Probably... <laughs> Probably a mistake there. Then a 1 in 36 chance. Disaster. Absolute disaster. A critical 1 in 36. I was really not happy. I was like, I have to not have to make any critical 1 in 36 as this drive. That was my goal. And I failed on turn 12. And I was very sad. And then this time I just stand him up and don't dodge out. I could have just not stood him up, right? Because it's just, again, it's just giving him a chance to get lucky, right? You could just cast him there. So maybe I should have just left him lying down again. You could have also chained him into... Wait a minute. You could have chained him into there, couldn't he? This guy could have come up there and he could have blocked this guy, chained him into here, put a player there, blocked, blocked, and 2 d the ball. Oh, my goodness. Well, that was a mistake from me standing that guy up, wasn't it? That was a big mistake from me standing that guy up. Huge mistake. That could have lost me the game. Luckily, he didn't spot it. Oh, wait, no, that's my player. <laughs> okay, errata, errata, that's my player. If my player was his player, I'd be in a lot of trouble right now. <laughs> I'd be in a lot of trouble if my player was playing for him. But luckily, he's on my side still. I thought, why have I got a base cage? I did surprise myself there. Oh, what the hell? No, don't worry. Don't worry, we're not in trouble. He didn't spot, he did in fact not spot that I, my player was not on his side. So, again, first things first, make this block, now we are safe, right? The ball is completely safe in a big old cage. Good. Safety first. Right. And then I get this guy behind enemy lines into scoring range lovely jubbly something for him to think about yeah. and now and then this two plus up right so like the the turn that i made the three two out with this guy well with no with this guy the turn that he three twoed out and the turn that this guy just stood up i shouldn't have done that i should have stayed lying down and then eventually get the chance to just two plus away like that so yeah never mind because eventually he's got to assault the cage and then he's going to leave me either not based on 2 plus, which is just better, isn't it? So I should have thought of that, to be fair, and not done it earlier. This is doing things, isn't it, these chains, but not too much. <laughs> yeah, he could have done that, Pedro! <laughs> 
could have done. And he's decided to completely ignore the scoring threat. Which makes me think, well, I can just score then, can't I? <laughs> so, yeah. Which else here? Take the push. Push again. And now, this guy has got a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 2 plus to win the game. So, um, you know, it sucks. Again, it's a critical 1 in 36. I don't have to make, I don't want to have to make a critical 1 in 36. Luckily, I tried to power him first with that one before then hitting him with the other. So I, I absorbed the dubs, the dubs down there perfectly. This, like, you know, helps it a little bit, right? Helps cover the failure state a tiny amount. Make the two plus hand off. Good. We're away. And we can't reach. And that's GG. Glorious. Oh my god, it's I'm I'm feeling a little bit stressed just watching it now. <laughs> but that was I mean that was uh it was so stressful this game. Um, and then he just passes turn. So I, I, I thought, you know, in case he's trying to trick me, <laughs> I'll blitz this witch out. <laughs> <laughs> in case there's some kind of like crazy play on that involving chaining things, I'm just gonna blitz this and then I'll end the turn as well. And like maybe there, what maybe he could have done something insane to get somebody in scope. But I mean, he'd have to score. Like, he had to score back against me. He couldn't, you know. And I didn't score. I could have just made it two 0 But for two things, we would have both had to set up a game, which would have wasted time. And second of all, there was a one in a million, probably not even a one in a million, one in ten million chance of him getting a riot, one turning, and then getting a blitz or another, uh, sorry, a timeout. Getting a timeout, one turning, and then getting a blitz or another timeout, and then like reverse one turning again. So, um, you know, it was a double, it was a double whammy of both saving time and, uh, and preventing a one in a billion chance of it being a 2-2 draw. <laughs> um, so there you go, and um, that's it. So congratulations me, champ, champ, champ. Uh, not champ, obviously, just threw it the round of 16. But uh, I was quite happy with how I played, honestly. I was quite happy with how I played. Um, I thought Go Go played completely fine. I don't, I, you know, he was in hard positions, right? Both games, he was in hard positions. He was like, and it wasn't easy, so. Like that that's the thing, isn't it? So I think uh I think he played fine, you know, I think I think maybe he did a few things a little bit less good than I did, and I think that was the difference. So I'm happy about that. <laughs> you know, like it wasn't like you know, it wasn't like he just did awful errors or anything, and it's not like, you know, either of us cast the other one out to death or anything. It was just I think I think I did play a tiny little bit better. So there you go. Exactly Ordon, exactly. Um, and thanks for watching everybody, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, and stay fantastic.